Astros becoming the Express Rangers, Triple <laughs> A team. Um, um, maybe. Yeah. Well, that would. Well, they got Double A in Frisco. I guess that would expire. Yeah, that right? makes sense, wouldn't it? Oh, it makes perfect. Oh, sense. I don't know yeah. when it expires. I think yeah. it's like 2011. We'll still have the Round Rock Express. It'll just be a different affiliation. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, the people down there. Are, I'm sure everybody's breathing <laughs> a sigh of relief now. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, it, that, that part of the equation is over. The nameplates aren't in tape anymore. You can, you can put them, put them on, you can so, screw them in right. the walls now. So everything's, um, player-wise, player I don't think it, it's changing much. You, you, you read some of their quotes going, you know, we're still playing, we're still concentrating on what's going on on the field. And Ron Washington's doing a great job of, of preparing them mm -hmm. to do that. And I think that, that group right now, it reminds me of, um, uh, you know, they, they have a, a, a small, young core, but but the veterans, the Mike Youngs, the, the Hamiltons um, on that team, Vladimir Guerrero, the, the guys that are kind of keeping that thing together. Because uh, it, it's, it's a team right now that just play uncomfortable. Last night they were down three <coughs> runs in the middle of the game and came back. So it's it's a team that's just playing comfortable baseball, and that's what it takes, especially right now in August. Easier to play comfortable baseball with a 10-game lead in the standings? Or? Well, sure it is. Yeah. But... You also know that you know you got you play the Angels more, you play within your division a few more times. I'm pretty sure seven times in the last two weeks. Yeah, something like that. So so if you got a seven game lead, you know nothing's over until until that asterisk is by your name and and the way um but what I say the way they're playing it's it's kind of their own cruise control right now. Well, Brooks had mentioned it, you know Astros had their seven game winning streak snap last night, but they're they're getting pretty close to single digits in terms of uh, how much they trail in the central. I think they were 12 back. Or 13 today. Oh, is it 13 back? Yeah. They're is actually that, is that out of it? Three from the bottom. I mean, in their division, they got two teams blown now: the Cubs and the Pirates. Yeah, so and they're reeling that's, in. That's, I mean, they the have, they haven't been that high in a long time. <laughs> so are they done? They got they got rid of the right people, I guess. He ain't answering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are done. Because oh, <laughs> <done. laughs> I'm still giving them that glimmer of hope, man. I, I really well, am. Sure, I, well, you have to I, until the asterisk is by your name. Yeah. But the Cardinals and, and the Reds are they're still playing. I mean, they're up on the Cardinals now, so that's going to flip flop the whole time. And when you when you have two or three teams ahead of you and you're trying to to get up to first place, that's that's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Even in the wild card, if you're only five games out in the wild card, but there's five teams ahead of you, it's t it's hard to, to to jump that many teams in in the standings. So either Joey Votto will lead his team to the to the uh, division title, or will be Albert Pujols leading his team. One of the I think they're like dead heat now for. Home runs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd I, I still got my money on the Cardinals. If I was a bet man. Pitching? Managing? Pitching. Pitching. No, okay. I think Dusty's a great manager. Okay. Dusty's a great manager. Um, the, the, the youth of Cincinnati might hurt him a little bit, and, and the pitching, especially in that ballpark. It's a hitter's ballpark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Greg Swindell joins us uh, every Thursday. As we get a chance to catch up, talk a little baseball here on AM 1300 The Zone. Well, I, I know you, you follow baseball. You, you keep it locked on the MLB network. This uh, Help me try to decipher this AL East. Uh, you got Tampa, who's uh, deadlocked with the, the Yankees at 67 and 40 on the year. And you got Boston, who's six and a half games back with the best, perhaps the best, best starting rotation and bullpen right. of the three teams, perhaps. Um, do you have any favorites? Do you, who's going to, in your opinion, who do you think is going to win this AL East? I, I still think the Yankees, with experience, will will pull it out in the end. But um, Tampa, I mean, <laughs> these guys, they're proven they're they're the team they were a few years ago when they went to, to the World Series. Fair enough. Um, the, the starting pitching, they've always had that. And now they've added the big Neiman kid from Rice, mm -hmm. who's having a good year, David Price. Is the the leading Cy Young winner right now? He came in a few years ago in the playoffs as a rookie, and, and shut him down. Um, Boston over, overall, I think, has the best team, bullpen wise, middle relief wise, starting wise, and and the the nine on the field, uh, the hitters. So um, I think, but right now, I think, like I said, with Texas and and, and the Angels, um, they're all going to knock each other off towards the end of the season. They're all in the same division. Right. Tampa and Boston are going to play. New York and Tampa are going to play. New York and Boston are going to play. So it's kind of a, a, a tough road to climb, tough mountain to climb when you get this late in the season. Hey, you talked about bullpens, and you also talked about the Reds and them being a young team. They got a young arm in Aroldis Chapman, mm -hmm. the starting pitcher who throws like 103 miles per hour. and Starter? Yeah. The, the Cuban kid. Yeah. Starter that throws 103? Yeah. He and won't, he won't uh, go in the big league. well, I don't. I mean, he I, might. Yeah, so, I don't know. They're saying right now he's long. been clocked at 103 numerous times. Wow. So, 
But, you know, once again, it goes wow. back to, this is what I'm saying. Got some nasty stuff. And if you're the Reds, when's the right time to bring them up? Now, Buster Olney, you know, who's a huge baseball guru, swears that he's coming up here in the next few weeks. I would assume, though. But why would you keep a guy like that down when you're in the middle of a pennant chase? I This is what just... It's mind-boggling me about baseball. I mean, clearly this guy, perhaps maybe better than anybody you have in your starting rotation, you've been there. What, what's the deal with this, man? This is, um, they need to, yeah. They're, they're a half a game up on, on, on St. Louis right now. Um, the young arms, he's, he's obviously a young arm and a, and a talented young arm, um, but it's, it's going to be difficult for him. He's, he's the Cuban kid that they, they signed before the season. Um, not difficult, meaning, you know, as, as far as his – you know, being Cuban, but coming over, it you see what happened to Strasburg. Strasburg's been on the DL now for 15 days. It's not an easy thing to do. So <laughs> maybe, maybe they're hoping that they can bring him, wait another week or so, so that if he does break down, because, it, I mean, it's it's all out at, at the major league level. Yeah. And I, if you're throwing 103 miles an hour. Um, wow. You, <laughs> well, to me, that's well, a, and I'm sorry, to that's me, okay. I mean, that's like that, that, that whole, it's a marathon, you know, not a sprint. Right. Guys who are crafty, guys who understand their body, guys who understand baseball, guys who coerce ground balls, and you know, pitchers. The guy that throws 103, to me, I don't think pitcher. I think he's got closer written all over him. Yeah. yeah, just <laughs> come in and, hey, you yeah. guys are all tired. You've been out here for seven innings. Let me close this out. Try to hit <laughs> Let me this. close the door here. I mean, he, he hasn't been groomed that way. He's been starting. Man. And if you're going to close, I mean, that's getting ready every day, every other day. Yeah. Um, and when you throw that hard, it, it, it takes a. It takes a while to to tune your body to be able to to bounce back every day. So the obvious question is, does he have a change? <laughs> does he have a off speed pitch? Yeah, his change up's the average fastball. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, well, yeah. well, if you the Strasburg was throwing a ninety mile an hour change up, and he was, <laughs> he was pitching at ninety nine. So, so yeah, but I, that's what yeah, I, I no think chance. could be a, a big reason. There's always you know the the September call up, but. Um, I think they're waiting maybe another two weeks because if he does break down, um, his season's over. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because it's, it's Strasburg proved that he, he pitched Fair seven enough. or eight starts and then broke down with, with soreness and tired and tired arms. So it's a uh, it's a grind at that level. And I think Mr. Strasburg learned that. I think he's back now pitching. But um, the the Reds are going to need him down the stretch, and that could be a way to keep him healthy down the stretch. How does that call up work? I mean, they, they expand the roster from twenty five to forty. Yes, you can do it September one. Yep. When do you have to submit your your playoff roster, your twenty five names for the guys that you'll have in the postseason? The thirty first, September thirty first, August thirty first. Oh, August thirty first. So everybody can expand the roster, but you're going to bring fifteen guys up who are just most, most people bring five or six. Okay. Yeah, teams that are in the in the in the race might bring uh, a couple speedy guys if they need pinch runners hmm. and they don't want to use other people. But if you can't use them in the postseason, why bring them up? Just to give them an experience, yeah. let, let them see what playoff type atmosphere bigs. is. Yeah. Maybe to rest your guys. Yeah. Rest your guys. Uh, if, if the Rangers can rest their guys, maybe other teams right now are in, in, in the thick of it. Yeah. We, we were 0-1. We were the Diamondbacks, and they called up some. We had like five lefties in the bullpen, and we're one game up. You know, I had um, two other lefties that were going. I'm, I've been there all year. Mm -hmm. I had two other lefties going in games to get people out. In the seventh and eighth inning, when we're in the thick of it, and they came up from a ball, and I'm sitting what? there thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, mm -hmm. this ain't right. <laughs> Something's not right here. <laughs> we're we're not supposed to be putting a ball guys in big league games. We're trying one game up in September. Yeah, but it worked out. Well, yeah, it did clear. Well, in, in the end, in the end, it worked. Those out. few games didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Luckily, the last eighteen games of the year, the Giants and us, when we won, they won. When they lost. Um, we lost. I, I mean, it. not luckily, but we we kept that one to two game lead for the last month of the season. When we'd lose, they would lose, and it was wow. whew, that that was luck right there. Greg Swindell joins us on Thursdays to talk a little bit of baseball from eight to nine.